Pastor Sam with another midweek Bible study to follow up to this past Sunday's message. We were looking at the first, uh, the first six verses of Joshua chapter three, but we really focused on verses three and four, where it talked about follow the Ark of the Covenant because you don't know the way you're going because you haven't been here before. And so we looked at you know that statement, you don't know the way you're going. Um, and, and the idea, the truth, the reality that we don't always know what's ahead, but God does. And so he provides leadership, right? Follow me because you don't know, but I do. And then we also looked at that idea of you, you don't know where you're going because you haven't been this way before. God takes us into new things. And I want to back up. Part of the message was looking at, okay, what is the significance of the Ark of the Covenant? And then we went on to look at how Jesus is the perfection of what the Ark represented for the people of Israel. Because everything points to Jesus. But I want to... Uh, for this, this follow-up Bible study, we're going to look at another detail of the Ark of the Covenant that we didn't examine in Sunday's message. And that's what was inside the Ark of the Covenant. Because one of the other titles of the Ark that it's referred to as in Exodus 25, 22, and in several other places, it refers to it as the Ark of the Testimony. And in Exodus 25, 16, God talking about the Ark says, you shall put into the Ark the testimony that I shall give you. And he's referring to the Ten Commandments that he gives Moses. And so this Ark is also referred to, not just the Ark of the Covenant, but it's also referred to as the Ark of the Testimony. And I, I don't want us to miss this detail about it because we looked at how the Ark represented God's throne. We looked at how the Ark represented God's presence for the people, how it represented God's leading the people. And so this wasn't just the Ark of the Covenant, this was also the Ark of His Testimony. And I love that reminder that it was the house of his testimony, the housing of his testimony. Like, this is what went before. So God's testimony went before his people. His presence was there with his testimony. And so I want to consider this, this idea, this, the testimony of God that was in the ark that led the people, that represented his presence, that represented the uh, atonement because it was the mercy seat from which he received atonement for the people. And I want to consider that idea of testimony, God's testimony, and what that means for us today. And so you've got Exodus 25, 16, you shall put into the ark the testimony that I shall give you. And then later on, God also speaks through a prophet to his people about this idea of testimony. This is Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. God says, Behold, new days, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And so he says, I'm, I'm make, once again, I'm doing something new. I will make a new covenant with my people. And then in verse 33, he says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. My testimony, I will put it in them. It will indwell them. It will be transcribed on their hearts. So you see the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God with us, Jesus in us, right? We see this in the New Covenant. But then it's also referenced, if you go to Hebrews, this exact passage is referenced in Hebrews to, to again reinforce that this is Jesus, the perfecter of all things, the mediator of the New Covenant. In Hebrews 10, remember last week for the challenge where I said, read Hebrews 9, and then, you know, I went, Psst, also read Hebrews 10 and 11? This, this is why. Because Hebrews 10 talks about Christ's sacrifice and his perfection of and mediating this new covenant. In Hebrews 10, 15 through 16, and the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. And so we see that Jesus is that perfection, is that new covenant of God putting his testimony in our hearts and in our lives. But this is still kind of a vague concept, this idea of he's put it in our hearts. You know, we've looked at different things about I meditate on your word and stuff. And I want to go back to Psalms for really an example of what this looks like. This is Psalm 40, verses 6 through 8. In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. You have given me an open ear. You don't delight in my offering. You don't delight in me going through the ritualistic motions. You've given me an open ear. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. 
I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. And that's what I want to emphasize for this. And I know I emphasize this regularly. So I, at least I hope you feel like I emphasize this regularly because I try to. God's word needs to be so essential in your life that it can be accurately described as written on your heart. You know, it, it, there's a reason why God himself refers to this as my word. Like he says, my word. He refers to it as his words. It blows my mind. And I've been guilty of this at times, but it, it always astounds me when people say like, oh, I just wish I could hear from God. I just wish God would speak to me. Like I just, all, if I could just hear from God, and I'm like, what? His word. I mean, really, if, if you're watching this and you've said, I wish I could hear from God, my immediate response is always going to be, then open your Bible. If you want to hear from God, open your Bible. I want to hear from God. That's why I open my Bible so regularly. One, because we're called to, but two, because there's that desire to. There's a desire to know him and to hear him. And so I open my Bible because this is his word. And so when you put all of this together, this idea of the ark of the testimony leads the people. And then God says, okay, my testimony, Moses, put my testimony in the ark to lead my people. And then to Jeremiah, he says, the days are coming when I will put my testimony in the hearts of my people. And then in Hebrews, God says, okay, this has happened. Jesus has come. The new covenant has been established. My law, my testimony is written in the heart of my people. It's been put in my people. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is, do I allow God's word to lead me? You want to know what to do? Read God's word. And here's the great thing about God's word. It's not an encyclopedia. And what I mean by that, it's not as simple as midlife job crisis. Oh, midlife job crisis, turn to page 734 and you'll get a definition and steps. No, it's a narrative. So it's not meant to be read one section removed out of context of everything else. It's, med it's meant to be read and known as a whole. And so if you're like, well, I do read my Bible. You know, I've read the book of John 73 times. Okay, one, that's awesome, right? Like I will never discount spending time in God's word. But if I've read the book of John 73 times, I've never read any of the minor prophets. Well, expand your repertoire. Really learn to understand and know this as the holistic narrative that it's meant to be, as God's entire word, his revelation, his complete revelation to us. God's testimony led his people in the Old Testament. Does God's testimony lead his people today? That's the question I ask myself regularly. Am I being led by God's testimony? Hope you're having a great week. Can't wait to see you guys Sunday. As always, if you have questions, comments, follow-up, thoughts, leave them below. We'd love to interact with you on this. Uh, but we'll see you Sunday if not.